All right, everyone. So for our first topics, we we have to answer the question that people often have when we are going to start to work with WordPress. What's the difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org? You might not even have had that question, so that's a big one to answer. On your web browser, go ahead and go to WordPress.com. So we'll go to the address WordPress.com. And so what we get here is a big uh, screen that says create your new website today. Get started. So WordPress.com lets you create a website right now, fully featured, very powerful, but actually mostly full featured. It does have limitations. So WordPress.com, oftentimes people create a website here, but then they run into limitations that I'll, that I'll talk about in a moment. So besides WordPress.com, there is also WordPress.org, O-R-G. Check out WordPress.org for a moment. WordPress.com says create your site right now. WordPress.com says download WordPress. Both of these are from the same company, the same parent company, but they have different purposes. So WordPress.com, create a website or blog for free right now. WordPress.org, download the software to create your own site. So .org assumes you already have some domain provider where you can install your software, your WordPress software. If you don't have that, you can't use the .org, really. So you'll see no problem. I'll go to the .com. You're saying it's free. It is free. You can make a website, but here's the negatives about it. Pros and cons. Here's the here's uh, cons. Your address, by default, will be something like Victor's webdesigns.wordpress.com. I wanted victorsdesigns.com. Well, you're going to get victorsdesigns.wordpress.com for free if you go to wordpress.com. If you pay, I think, like $20 a year, you can get the word victorsdesigns.com from WordPress. And $20 is not so bad. But the other con is Uh, no plugin support. A plugin is like a mini app that adds more features to something else. So the default WordPress.com doesn't let you add plugins. And our whole shopping cart system, that's a plugin. Because out of the box, WordPress does not come with shopping cart features. Out of the box, WordPress comes with blog features and basic website features. If you want advanced features like a shopping cart, like discussion boards, like chat features, like all of these more advanced things, you need a plugin. And that plugin, plugins, all plugins are not supported with the basic WordPress, the free WordPress.com. The other con is all the features are very expensive. The best features at WordPress.com are $300 per year. <laughs> and at other places, $300 will get you like five years of service. So WordPress.com, it's training wheels. And I don't mean that as a bad way. It, it's useful. WordPress.com is useful to get up and running quickly with WordPress, learn the basics. But then you're going to run into the problems about I can't put my own my own name exactly how I want. I can't use the plugins that I want, and all of the cool stuff is very expensive. So then that should be leaning us more toward what we really want is .org. We want our WordPress.org version of a of a site. The cons of that are you need to be more tech savvy. 
to get it to work. It's saying download the software. Okay, I downloaded it. What do I do? Double click to install? No, you have to upload it to your server, create a database, blah, 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 blah. It's more complex. So you need to be tech savvy really to work with it. Cons. You need to be your own tech support most often. You need to uh, troubleshoot your own problems or check in the support forums for help. Over at the .com, they're already there to help you, especially if you're paying for it, because you're paying for it. Whatever other cons I might have are all negated by one pro of you have the ultimate control. With .org, you have the ultimate control. Pick any design, any plugins, do anything you want with it, add to it, change it however you want. You can do whatever you want with it because it's that's the nature of the WordPress software at .org. They give you the software. Here it is. Do what you want with it. Use it how you want and and, and have fun. So for us in this class, we're going to be focusing on WordPress.org. The .com will not work for us. We cannot add a shopping cart to it. And I'm not going to ask you to pay $300 for a two-month class to learn this. We're going to do it this way. Now, if you have your own website and it's WordPress, you will be able to do what we're going to talk about here. Sure. But we're going to work with a virtual server, a free virtual server, a free domain, a free virtual domain, which means that whatever we're learning here, you can apply it to your real website. But I would recommend still to do what we're doing on a, on a virtual fake website for you to learn this stuff and then apply it to your real website. So you, if you make mistakes on our fake site, you don't make those mistakes on your real site. And whatever we do at this class, by the end of the class, if you want, we can then make that real. We can make it live. We can upload it to the real victor.com. Right now, we're going to be working on something that will only exist basically on your flash drive. No one can access it except you. But by the end of the course, we'll have the knowledge to be able to upload it for everyone to be able to use it. And so, as I said, you need to be tech savvy, you need to be your tech support and all of that. I've got handouts with all of these things and I've taught this class for a few years. I, I see the same errors over and over. So we'll, we should be able to fix everyone's problems. And uh, again, all my lectures are going to be recorded. And you'll be able to watch them again. If you miss something, come back, watch it again, rewind it, play it again at your leisure. It's, it's doable. I get people coming in coming in all the time, 20, 30 people at a time coming in taking these classes at all skill levels. People sometimes struggle a lot, but then by the end they've got it. Some people get it right away, and then by the end they have an amazing site. So every skill level can do this, but it is going to require you to, to not be afraid of being tech savvy and, and uh, you know, rolling up your sleeves and getting complex. And um, I always have to then say before we, we download it and work with it, um, I always then have to ask this question, and you have to ask yourself this, are you sure you want to be the next Amazon.com? Because that's basically what we're going to work. We are going to make a website found by everyone in the world. We are going to sell products. We're going to deal with credit cards. We're going to deal with shipping, taxing, all of that stuff. Because when you shop at Amazon or any other e-commerce website, what we see is a nice looking website where we click buy, maybe put in our credit card, a few days or weeks later we get our item on our doorstep. There was a lot between that click and that it gets to your doorstep. And now we have to be in charge of all of that in between stuff. We have to be in charge of having a secure website because we're going to deal with people's personal information and or credit cards. We're going to need to deal with inventory if we're selling you know, actual physical products and such. We're going to need to deal with shipping costs 
and dropping off our shipping items or getting them picked up. We're going to need to deal most likely with tax if you care about not getting audited. We're going to need to deal with returns, customer satisfaction, all of that stuff, like Amazon, like every other e-commerce website, like Etsy, like PayPal, uh, eBay, etc. And the reason people like to have it all done for them on Etsy or Shopify or eBay or whatever is because they take care of a lot of that stuff. They care a lot. They take care about the credit card processing and the shipping and the fulfillment and all of that. But they take a cut of that. They take a cut for shipping your stuff, for processing your credit cards. Etsy needs to keep the lights on. Amazon needs to keep the lights on. So they take a cut of everything that you sell. eBay as well. And so if we do it ourselves, we can take much more of, of, of a bigger cut. We'll decide our shipping. We'll decide our taxing. We'll decide all of that. There's still going to be the middleman of the credit card processing. We can't get away from that one, really. Whenever it comes to money, there's always someone involved. So when someone sees your product on the website and clicks buy, internally there's bank transactions and vouching for the money and escrow accounts and all of that. And now we are going to have to deal with that, and it's not as complex as it sounds, but there's going to be a middleman. And what we're going to use eventually is PayPal. We have several credit card processors we can work with. <coughs> All of them will work, but the easiest way to teach the class is through PayPal. And most of these companies are going to take like 3% of your sale, which could add up if you're selling you know, $2,000 jewelry, but you're still going to reap the rewards on everything else. Uh, so what we'll do is, to get started, I've got a handout for you. Don't worry about clicking download here. If you did, don't worry about it. But I'm going to close the web browser. I've got a handout for you with a bunch of steps that we will do together. A bunch of steps that are already done because most of the software is already set up for us to get started here. But if you'd like to do anything that we're learning here at home, on your own laptop or, or MacBook or whatever, I've got a handout for you to download all the free software. So let's go back to the network folder. Go ahead and minimize your windows again and go back up to computer window. Double click computer. You will then see under network location Classroom data drive Z, double click that one. Z is in zebra. Scroll down to find our class, Campos WordPress 1, and I just added three items step one, two, and three. Drag those to your flash drive or desktop. Drag them from my folder to your desktop or your flash drive. I'll turn on the printer a little bit. In a little while, let's all make sure we copy those three files. Does anyone need any help finding those files? Now, um, once you copy those three files, again, I'll be giving you files throughout the course. These are the first three. They are numbered. If you look on their file names, you will see Campos eCommerce 1, set up WAM server, 2, set up WordPress, and 3, basic WordPress. Before you go through each step and do these, let's pause a moment. We don't have to do them all. I'll, I'll explain which ones. So open up number 1. Campus e-commerce one. Question?
Yes. Let's take a look at this first handout. What we're going to do is use this virtual server software called WAMP Server. Now, as I said, if you're going to have victor.com, if you're going to have amazinggiftbaskets.net, you're going to need to buy that service, and we'll have a discussion on that later. But we don't need to buy that for this class, because what we're going to do is use a virtual server. With this software, we are able to create as many websites as we want, real websites. The catch is that you will only be able to access those websites from your computer. They're not going to be real websites on the internet yet. They're going to be on a virtual server, on a virtual computer, on your system. You don't have to download this software. It's already installed, so don't click on that. At home, if you want to do this, you want to follow those instructions to go download the software. I forgot to say, if you're on a Mac and you want to do this at home, on the net, in the network folder, I had a folder called Mac. If you're on the Mac, uh, I've got separate instructions 1 and 2. The other ones are going to be the same, but just 1 and 2 are different on the Mac. For Windows, we've got software called WAMP Server. On the Mac, we've got software called MAMP server, W for Windows, M for Mac. There's also one called LAMP server for Linux. So if any of you take our other classes here for networks and such and you use Linux, there's a Linux version of the software. We've got Windows computers here. We've got the software already installed. You don't need to go through this. At home, if you want to follow along, you need to do step one. But it's done for us here. What we need to do when we're in class on your desktop, you're going to see a little magenta-colored W. That's our WAMP server software. So on your desktop, find the W, double-click it. Nothing happens in that you don't get any window that pops up, you don't get any welcome message or anything. What happens is, on the bottom right corner, most likely hidden inside of that double arrow, you will see a little green W. I look right in the corner there. If it's not visible, put the double triangle. You should see a green W. That's the only, in, the only indication that you're running the WAMP software, the virtual server. Did everyone get that green W to show up? This creates a virtual server. If you put your mouse on it, don't worry that it says it's offline. That doesn't mean anything. Don't worry. But when we come to class, and I'll remind us, of course, but when we come to class, we're going to double-click that, that uh, purple W, and that's our WAMP software. The handout tells you how to set it up, so don't do step one and two in class. It's done. Step three, confirm WAMP server works. Open your web browser. Go to this address. Let's give that a try. Open any of your web browser that you like and type that address. Notice there's no.com. Open a web browser and type that address. HTTP colon slash slash localhost. One word. No space. No.com.
I'm not missed. Right, so if you go to that address localhost, this, this screen that you see here, this is basically the WAMP server welcome screen. If you don't see this, um, this W here, that means you didn't start WAMP server. You didn't double click your, your purple W on the desktop. But this is showing, okay, you've got a virtual server. And at the bottom, your projects. We don't have any websites yet. Your projects. No projects yet. To create one, just create a directory. Create a folder in www. So if we're able to get this screen, we have a virtual server. We can create one or many websites. One or many WordPress websites or Joomla websites or Dreamweaver websites, etc. So my handout, that was item three. If you're trying this and it's not quite working, maybe put in that address, 127.0.0.1. Those are zeros, not those. But if, it's, if you get that, it's working. If you see the WAM server config screen, everything was installed properly. The rest of the handout talks about that if you're having other trouble on your home computer, try these other steps. So that's everything really for, for sheet one. Nothing that we really need to do very much here, but this is for you to do at home. Any questions on sheet one? Let's go look at sheet number two. It's the one with the number two. Number two, set up WordPress. We've got a virtual server. We need the WordPress software. This has already been downloaded for us. At home, you would need to do step one, which is to go to wordpress.org, click download, blah, blah, blah. We've already got that done. We've already got the WordPress software downloaded and ready to use. So notice there's going to be these various steps. We're going to create a virtual server. This is going to be the, the, the way the, the course works. So what I want to do, since we've been here a little while, I want to take the first break. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the printer. If you'd like to print any of these handouts to have them handy as we do it, we'll be able to do so. Um, I would recommend to print out handout two, maybe three. You can probably just look at three as we do it, but most likely two. So it's 7.20. We're going to take a break for about 10 minutes until 7.30. I'll turn the printer back on, and then we'll continue.